So here we have a small shrub or tree. It's about 10 feet tall. So, and looking at it, we can tell that it's not fully mature. Coming closer, if we look at the leaves, we're going to see that those leaves are simple. They are alternating on the stem. So we have simple, alternate. And if we look at those, the underside of the leaf, we see that they are prominently penny veined. So if we were to go back to our key in our field guide, so make sure again that you're looking at the key that is to the broadleaf trees and shrubs. So we can tell that this is a broadleaf. This is not a gymnosperm. <clears throat> our first choices are most leaves reduced to sharp spines. Few leaves have normal blades. Um, or most leaves not reduced to spines. Most leaves have normal wide blades. So we can see that these are definitely not reduced to spines. Therefore, those leaves are fairly wide. So we would take choice number two, which is then are the leaves simple or are they compound? And looking at those leaves, we can tell that they are simple because that petiole is attaching directly to the stem rather than to a rachis. So they are simple, which takes us to our next choice is, are they opposite or alternate? And it looks like those leaves are alternating on the stem. So we could say that the leaves are alternate that takes us to choice number 15, if you're using the little gen the bright orange Jensen book. If we go down to 15 in our dichotomous key, we see our choices are leaves palmately lobed and veined, maple-like, or leaves not palmately lobed and veined. And these are obviously not like our maple leaves, if you think of the Canadian flag, not, not a maple or palmately lobed leaf. Therefore, we'll take choice number 20. Number 20, our choices are are the branches armed with thorns, buds red, fruit a brightly colored palm, or branches not armed? Well, we don't have any fruit on this bush, so we can't tell whether it's a brightly colored palm or not, but we can see that the branches are not armed. So because the branches are not armed, we'll go to number 21. So our next choice is leaves have two to four distinct glands on the petiole or base of leaf and stipules are common. So we look closely at our leaf and try to see if there are any um, glands on the petiole and I don't see any of those tiny little wart-like dots that would look like glands. And we also don't have stipules which look like those leafy appendages towards the base of your petiole. So no stipules, no glands on the petiole, so we're not looking at a prunus. So no glands on petiole or leaf takes us to choice number 22. So now our choice is leaves wedge-shaped, apex much wider than base, apex three-lobed and tend to persist, or leaves not web-shaped, apex not three-lobed, may be deciduous or persistent. So it doesn't look like we have wedge-shaped leaves and the apex is not three-lobed. So we'll choose the leaves not wedge-shaped, apex not three-lobed, may be deciduous or persistent. So we'll go down to number 24. Leaves three-veined from the base of the blade, petiole short and rounded, or leaves usually not three-veined. If three-veined, then the petiole is distinctly flattened. So if we look at these leaves, do you think that those are three-veined? Or do we have more than three veins? And especially on the underside of the leaf, we can see these are prominently penny veined. We have more than three veins. So we'll choose the not three veined. That takes us to number 25. Leaves linear, long and slender, plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch wide and tend to persist or not linear. Well, these definitely don't look very linear. So that would be something more like your chrysothamnus or ericomeria. So leaves not linear takes us down to number 26, which is leaves persistent, stiff, thick, and leathery, previous year's leaves present with the current leaves, or leaves deciduous and not as above. So looking at these leaves, um, it looks like these could potentially be deciduous. So we'll go with leaves deciduous, not as above, and go down to number 45. So number 45, young twigs distinctly ribbed or ridged 
but not triangular and bright rich kelly green or young twigs usually round in cross section ribbed or triangular in some species but not bright green the twigs if you look at these twigs they don't have any distinct ribbing they're not ridged and they're definitely not triangular and they're also not really a bright kelly green so therefore we'll go with young twigs are round in cross section so these are rounded if we were to roll them between our fingers they would roll really easily and that takes us down to number 47. So the entire petiole, this part, distinctly flattened laterally, blade may be nearly round, chordate, triangular, or rhomboid, or the petiole is round or absent, not flattened laterally, but may be somewhat flattened on the top. If the petioles are both round and flattened on the same plant, can be keyed out either way. So I would say again that the petioles would roll fairly easily between my fingers, Therefore, they're round and not flattened. So this is not one of our populace that we're looking at. So we will go to 48. All right, leaf margins entire and unlobed, or leaf margins may be toothed, serrated, and or lobed. And I'll warn you that on a lot of plants, when it gives you these choices on entire or serrate, sometimes <clears throat> if it has very, very fine serrations, that are not immediately obvious, your keys may call it entire or they may call it finely serrate. So I would note that number that <clears throat> if we go astray in the key, that's one of the really likely spots to go astray is with the leaf margins entire versus serrate. So I'm going to go with entire. They are very, very slightly serrate, very finely serrate, but we'll try entire and unlobed first and we'll see how that works. So our next choice is buds naked and dark brown, leaves distinctly penny veined, bark smooth and gray and splotchy, or buds not naked and they have imbricate scales. So we have some buds that are barely visible here, but they are definitely not naked. And then remember, we already talked about how these leaves are distinctly penny veined. So penny veined being, you have this very distinct midrib and then you have veins on either side of that midrib going off at an angle. So this is very distinctly penny veined. Therefore, our book tells us that we are looking at Romnus persiana. 